everyone. In today's video, we're going to talk about what are the things that make your sound system effective. Now, there are three things that make a sound reinforcement system effective. Three things it has to be. It has to be loud enough, it has to be intelligible, and it has to remain stable. So what we're going to talk today about is what loud enough is. What is loud enough? So for my sound system to be uh, effective in a conference room in any given environment, it's got to be loud enough. It has to be able to be heard above the ambient noise. Now ambient noise is just the stuff that goes on in the room, the air conditioning, heating system, uh, footfalls from people walking above or below, uh, anything that can contribute to the overall just stagnant noise that's in a room, the ambient noise. And what we're going to need to do is take an ambient noise measurement. So I'm going to pull out my SPL meter and we're going to take an ambient noise measurement. So I want to make sure my sound system is going to uh, get to a level at least, at least 25 dB above the ambient noise. So we need to design for that. We'll go over that in a little bit. Uh, at least 25 dB above the ambient noise. And I need to have the same level to everyone's ears in the room. Uh, usually plus or minus 3 dB works out about good. Uh, some more ambient noise there. My printer is just starting to clean itself. Uh, so 25 dB above ambient. Now I'm very conservative and you'll see what the as a sound guy, I like to go 30 dB above ambient, just a little bit more. I like to plan on that a little bit more just in case there's something that happens in the room, like a printer starting to clean itself, uh, that my sound system can still be heard well. So 25 dB minimum above ambient level. I like 30. It's also easier on my math. Uh, no perceived distortion. We don't want our sound system, when I turn it up, I don't want my sound system to have any type of uh, crackle or fizzle or, or fuzz on any of the frequencies around. So. If I'm really trying to push up the lows and they get really man, boomy and, and fizzly on the lows or it starts to rattle things or if my highs start to peg out when I have sibilance if it starts to crackle the speakers, that's perceived distortion. So I want less than 1% total harmonic distortion on that signal. And I also need adequate signal to noise level electronically. So this is like when I'm on my mixer, right? I'm on my mixer and, and I have a microphone coming in and I hit mute on that microphone. That level on that mixer drops down to like a good mixer drops down to like negative 80, negative 70 dB. And then I want to set that channel of that microphone to something like zero dB. So when I'm talking to it, you know, it's not a, a static sound like going through. When I'm talking in it, that bounces around that zero level, that speech, that dynamic signal bounces around that zero level. So if, it's, if that channel's being used, if that, that signal is going through, we have about zero dBU. And then when it's not being used, we have like at least, at least 60 dB down in signal level for silence. So at least 60 dB signal to noise. That noise on the electronics, the noise on the mixer drops down to less than 60 dB. Again, I like 70 to 80 dB less. But uh, I'm a conservative sound guy. When I talk about the ambient noise in the room, I'm going to get my SPL meter. You can all see my SPL meter. And I'm going to put that SPL meter. Let's see if I can frame this up right. So I got that SPL meter, and you can see it's on A weighting. I have the A weighting on because that's how humans hear at lower volumes. That's a whole nother video. That's okay. That's how humans hear at lower volumes. And I'm going to put it on slow so I can get... Uh, more of an even reading. So I have it on the low frequency and you can see low is anywhere from 30 to 100 dB SPL. So I'm going to be looking for something in the 30 to 40 range for my ambient noise. Hopefully it's down there. My refrigerator and the printer's not kicking on and my dog is not having a heyday over there with his collar. And you know, there's, there's a party going on upstairs and the footfall. So hopefully in this quiet room, I get between 30 and 40. So let's see what we get. Oh yeah. One more thing is when I'm taking this ambient measurement, uh, when I talk, when I put any kind of noise into the room, it's putting energy into the room. 
So that energy, that what it's doing is moving these molecules of air around. That's how the sounds get into my microphone. That's how the sound gets to our ear holes is this, this movement of energy in the molecules in the room. So when I'm taking an ambient noise measurement, I need to wait for a little while and you'll see it when the molecules are, even after I stop talking, they're bouncing around, you can't really hear them, but they're still moving. I have to wait for those molecules to kind of settle back into place and, and be stagnant. So then it just tests the little bits of energy. Let's uh, put this up. And right now I'm talking into it really close, so it's probably kind of high. We're going to take an ambient noise measurement. Okay, so we see I have about 41.2 dBA weighted SPL. 41.2 dB of sound with an A weighting on it in this environment. Now, uh, the refrigerator's on right now and I can hear it and there's a goat outside bleeding and bleh, so it's probably contributing to my ambient noise but that's what we got that's what we have to work with so for me I need my sound system to be at least well I would like it to be 71 dB 71.2 dB you can go down to what's well, 71 minus 5 66 dB 66 dB coincidentally is 66 to 70 is about the average of what a human mouth hole is going to reproduce normal conversational tone at one meter. So if I am one meter away, get out my meter stick here. This is a adjustable meter stick, 39 inches. So one meter away from my microphone and my mouth hole should be about 66 to 70 dB. Again, speech is dynamic. It's not a static tone, so it's going to go up and down. So, I'm going to shoot for about conversational tone level in this room for my sound system to be good. Now, normally, if I just need to get 66 dB above the, the ambient, if I need 25 dB above the ambient noise and it comes out to be 66, sound my uh, system might not help me that much in this smallest space. But if it's a huge space and I have listeners really far away, say I have listeners 20, 30 feet away, well, that sound from my mouth hole, 66 dB at one meter, by the time it gets four meters down, four meters down the line, I'm going to lose 12 dB. So that 66 dB tone from my mouth, that 66 that we need in this room to be 25 above ambient, now they're only getting 54 from my mouth hole. So I'm 12 down. So now they're only getting about 13 dB above the ambient noise. So far down the line, I would need some loudspeakers. I wouldn't need them right here, far down the line. We need to see, okay, so now I I've, I've know what my mouth hole's getting. I know what the ambient noise of the room getting. I have my loudspeaker. I can adjust my loudspeaker to be measured out at one meter for 66 dB. So what I'm going to do is put some pink noise in the room, see how loud my loudspeaker needs to be. Uh, let's put some pink noise in the room. Now, it's probably going to get kind of hard to hear my voice with the pink noise. So I'll talk loud. All right, so I got down to about 71.5, 71.4 dB. Let's just call it 71 for grins. Uh, 71 dB. Now, that's 30 dB above ambient noise. 30 dB above ambient noise. I'm going to get my trusty assistant here to hold the SPL meter off camera, and I actually want to see what my mouth hole is doing at 39 inches. So I'm going to talk, and my mouth hole here at... 39 inches or one meter is registering about 68, six, between 68 and 71 dB. I'm a little loud. I'm used to talking very loud to a classroom. So basically my mouth hole and this loudspeaker are going to be the same volume. I just adjusted this for the 30 dB above ambient in this room. What I'm going to do is show you 25 dB signal to noise acoustically. My mouth hole and this guy are the same. 
So what we're going to do is turn this on, and I'm going to stand equal to this and see what the microphone hears. This is a 0 dB signal-to-noise ratio, signal-to-noise, 0 dB. We're both the same, about 70, 71 dB SPL. So let's hear what it sounds like. So now the loudspeaker is on, blast now pit noise at 71 dB. I'm standing here at one meter, and I'm standing here talking about 69 to 71 dB. We have pretty close to a 0 dB signal-to-noise ratio, 0 dB signal-to-noise. What I'm going to do is lower this a few decibels. I'm going to try and get it down to about 60, 61 dB and take it down 10 dB. Okay, so now I just dropped this 10 dB. This is our noise floor. So what I did, my, my mouth hole and this were the same. 0 dB signal to noise. I just dropped this 10 dB. Now I have a 10 dB signal to noise ratio going on. My mouth hole is still between 69 and 71 at 1 meter. This is now 61 at 1 meter. So I'm about 10 dB louder than my sound system. Now you're probably like, hey Chuck, I can still hear you. Yeah, but you can still hear that pretty good too. So I would need to talk a lot louder to be clearly understood. Now I don't know how loud that was, but it's probably pretty loud. Let's try and get this guy down to say 51 dB SPL. We'll do a negative 20 signal to noise. The air conditioning just kicked on. Gotta turn the AC off. It's louder than the loudspeaker right now. I wonder how loud that AC is. Air conditioning just kicked it up. 10 full dB. 10 full dB on the air conditioning. Wow. Those are some of the things we have to fight when we're designing rooms. We want to make sure we get good measurements right off the bat because if I was designing a room for 41 dB ambient noise and I didn't take the measurement with the AC, which is right there, kicking on, I'd be 10 dB shy. Give it a minute while the air conditioning turns off. Okay. Now that the air conditioning's off, let's get a measurement of the speaker. Hopefully we can get it to 51 dB. The air conditioning was at 50, 51 dB. So we want to try and get our speaker there our loudspeaker. All right, so our loudspeaker is about 51 and a half dB. Uh, so now my mouth hole is about 20 dB louder than the loudspeaker. We have a 20 dB signal to noise ratio. This would be my background noise, whatever it is, is if it's the HVAC, if it's uh, lights in the room, printer going off, anything that is going to contribute to that ambient noise. So now, we took the ambient noise, the original ambient noise measurement was 41 dB. My mouth hole is going to be 66 to 70. That is 25 to 30 above that ambient noise. Let's see if we can get our environment again back to 41 dB SPL. Okay, so the refrigerator kicked on, and it kicked it up another dB or so in the air, but we're at about 42.3. So, 42 plus 25 is going to give me 67. That's right in the middle of where my speech range would be. So, this is what uh, that 25 to 30 dB would sound like. I have 25 to 30 dB of signal over the noise in the room, the ambient noise. If I turn this on, even 5 dB, that's going to cut that 25 to 30 down to 20 to 25. What we want to make sure, this whole thing is to make sure that our environment, whatever our environment is, our loudspeaker can be raised up to approximately 25 to 30 dB, or our audio system in the room, all around the room, can be 25 to 30 dB above ambient. Plus or minus 3 dB to all ears, you know, some loudspeakers are going to be spaced apart. Uh, if, if I'm on axis with this guy, off axis, I'm going to lose a little bit. We'll get some speakers crossing, crossing the stream, so to speak, in the middle, and we get that, uh, that evenness of sound spread apart. 25 to 30 dB acoustic signal-to-noise level. 
plus or minus 3 dB to all ears, and one less than 1% total harmonic distortion, adequate signal to noise of negative 60 dB. So what I'm gonna do now is get my loudspeaker back to that average of 25 to 30 dB above ambient, and then we're gonna put some content through this guy and see what it sounds like, and we'll have quiet and then we'll have content and we'll have quiet and you can see the difference okay so now i set up some content i just threw an ipod down there with some music on it i have my loudspeaker adjusted i want to make sure it's still adjusted so let's uh, turn on our noise generator get our spl meter kick off one meter all right so i got 71 db there um you can see i have a 1 meter 71 dB, so my loudspeaker is set. Also, on my mixer, see, I'm gonna do something a little unorthodox here. On my mixer, you can see I have 0 dB on my light there. If I mute it, goes away, back there. So now, let's put some content through here. Make sure my content lights up the zero there. So there. Let's see what we measure out to. Look at that. So I got 71.1 dB measured out of my one meter. My sound system is 30 dB above ambient. Let's take that ambient reading one more time just for funsies. All right, as you can see, we're pretty stuck there at 41 dB. 41 dB ambient noise measured in this room. 71 dB at one meter measured from my, my audio source. That's 30 dB above the ambient noise. We saw what it's like when I kick the ambient noise up to 71 dB and I try and talk at 71 dB, it's hard to discern. Brought the ambient noise down to 61, you could hear my, my signal from my mouth hole a little bit cleaner. Brought it down to 51 with the air conditioning on and the, and the loudspeaker and you could hear it a little bit clearer. And now, ambient noise 41, my mouth hole 25 to 30 dB above the ambient noise, you can hear it really clear. And you can hear my content really well. And with that, I bid you adieu.